LLC presents Brought to you by the donations of our faithful partners And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it Because in it he had rested from all his work Which God created and made You know, that's a very simple concept, isn't it? How have we got, gotten the, the so mixed up and messed up? This, the Sabbath thing has caused so many problems in churches and, I mean, arguments and fussing and breaking up and people taking stands. What in the world happened? Hi, I'm Don Harris, and you've tuned in once again. And we, I, I want you to know I appreciate it. We're in the second part of a series on Sabbath. And what we want to do today what we want to do every day, and that is start to think red ink. What did the Lord say for us to do? Let's think about the red words in Scripture. What does He want us to do? What does He expect us to do? Because, you know, it really doesn't matter what pastor so-and-so wants or what the denomination expects. But we need to know what the Lord expects of us. We've been talking about the Sabbath day. We took a quiz last week. By the way, all these shows are available in archive. If you'd like to catch up, or you'd just like to see them again uh, for, for study purposes, go to thinkredink.com, and you can find any of these shows archived up there as, as they're broadcast. We put them up on the website, and so they're available for you there. So go to thinkredink.com. And, you know, if you're not a, uh, uh, involved in Think Red Ink ministry, we invite you to be that way. Um, where there's, there's, there's no membership, not selling anything. All I want is your email address, and if you'll give me that, we'll send you our Sabbath newsletter that comes out every Sabbath day. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I, put, I put thought into it. It's a, it's a devotional. It's not just a, an advertisement rag selling products. <laughs> the idea is to enhance your Sabbath there at, in your home. And we, in, we encourage people to keep what my wife and I call a domestic Sabbath, and that is to have the Sabbath at home, where Dad's the prophet and priest, and he's the king of the domain, and he's the one that, is, is the one that leads his, uh, his family in worship and in study. And uh, the, you know, Mom, Dad, the kids, a day of rest and relaxation and quietness there before the Lord, that's the best Sabbath you'll ever keep. And uh, if you ever do it, oh, I'll hear from you. <laughs> we have people write to us all the time and say, I can't believe I've wasted my whole life running around and fussing and doing all this stuff on Sabbath day or on Sunday and, and have been missing what the Lord actually gave us. And it's all found in that one little scripture, let no man go out of his tent on the Sabbath day. These are the days of rest, not of worship, as we talked about last week. Nowhere does the commandment say, thou shalt worship on the Sabbath. But he says, you'll rest on the Sabbath day. Now, the Sabbath has peculiarities about it that make it different than most any other uh, commandment or ordinance or anything we find in the Old Testament. Um, first of all, uh, it's... it's it's probably the most, I don't know, it's not despised. What would you call it? But people have really taken liberties with this doctrine. For some reason, uh, they, they take exception to it, and they take liberties with it, and they, and they argue and fuss over it. And, uh, and, and it's probably one of the most simple. You know, it's, I have a friend that told me once, he says, you know, if the Lord had said, thou shalt dig a ditch on the Sabbath day, you'd have people out there that are making new religions about ditch digging and whether or not we should use a, a shovel or a gold-handled spade or whether we should use machinery. How long should it be? How wide should it be? How deep should it be? But, you know, when he gives us a commandment like, I don't want you to do anything on the Sabbath day, just rest. We can't understand that. Oh, uh, you know, how do we do that? You know, I know how you feel. I felt the same way. But when you go to the scriptures, you'll find that there is a rest and a peace and a quietness to be found in Messiah, to be found in redemption. To be, you know, that the peace that passes all understanding. How are you going to enjoy the peace that passes all understanding when everybody around you is waving and singing and all the music is blaring and, uh, or it's got some preacher barking over a pulpit? You know, how are you going to do that? I don't know how you're going to do that. I have trouble doing it. So we keep our Sabbath at home in nice, quiet, holiness, separated silence. 
<laughs> and it's a, it's a beautiful time. Um, also, I need you to know that on Sabbath, somewhere around 3 p.m. Eastern, we broadcast a show for all of our friends out there that are friends of the ministry and uh, for the whole world, as a matter of fact. This show called Red Letter Edition Live is actually going around the world now on Internet radio. You need to be a part of that. You can get all this information on the website, thinkredinc.com. Let's get started. I want to show you some points about Sabbath. Sabbath, number one, was a part of the creation. This, make, this really sets it aside from every other commandment or ordinance in the Bible. You need to know that the Sabbath did not appear with the Ten Commandments. Sabbath was a part of the creation. God blessed and sanctified the seventh day, the scripture that I was reading as we opened today. Why, why, why is this significant? Well, think about this. Did God create the Sabbath? Did he create the Sabbath? Was the world created in six days or in seven days? You see, the Sabbath wasn't created. It was set apart. That's exactly what he expects you to do with it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it set apart. That's what holy means. That's what it means to set it apart, to set it aside. Remember how to, So how do you set it aside? By remembering it. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, for in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, have you ever considered that there is no reason whatsoever for a seven-day work week? I mean, a seven-day week? Except... For the fact that the Bible declares it to be a seven-day week? Isn't that fascinating? I mean, really, when you think about it, why isn't the day uh, a ten-day week? That makes more sense with the metric system. You know, the seven-day week is one of the last vestigial uh, signs or symbols or portions of the handiwork of God in the earth. You know, uh, the people who teach evolution have pretty much taken the evolution idea and dispensed with creation altogether. I mean, there's a lot of people that just don't believe it anymore. But there's one last vestigial sign left over from creation that you have an opportunity to witness to every week, and that is the seven-day week. And this is one reason why the Sabbath is so important. Do you realize that the Sabbath commandment is based upon creation? Why does he want you to keep it? Because in six days I created the earth. This is an amazing opportunity to glorify God as the creator of the earth by honoring the seventh day as Sabbath. All right, let's take a look at... Um, a scripture that is found in the Apocrypha, which I think is just really fascinating. Why is one day more important than another? When all the daylight in the year is from the sun. By the Lord's wisdom they were distinguished, and he appointed the different seasons and festivals. Some days he exalted and hallowed, and some days he made ordinary days. Now, friend, you, gotta, you have to understand this. It's going to have to come to you that this Sabbath commandment is that you set aside this day. This scripture I just read in the Apocrypha is actually asking what makes one day different than the other? The fact that he said so. Not that Constantine said so, not that the Pope said so, or your pastor or preacher, or even me. <laughs> but because he said it's different, it's different. And because it's different, you should keep that day in honor of him saying, him declaring that it is different. No, there's no difference when you look out in nature. You don't see the squirrels putting nuts away on every day except the Sabbath. You don't see birds feathering their nest on every day except the Sabbath. You can't find the Sabbath in creation. You can't find it out there. 
Yeah, I don't, if the rivers still run on Sabbath just like they do the other six days of the week, you can't find the Sabbath out there. That's why the Sabbath must be declared by you. That's what the, the actual Hebrew connotation of the word convocation means about the Sabbath day. That it is a proclamation. It is a day that you will proclaim. You call it the Sabbath day because the Father calls it the Sabbath day. And it is the height of honor that you would make that day Sabbath for no other reason. You have no reason to keep it other than the fact that he said so. Now the bad news, you have no reason to deny it other than the fact that you deny his authority. You have no reason to keep any other day other than the fact that you've established or, or esteem another man's authority over the authority of your father. It's a shame. It is a shame when we do not keep the Sabbath, let alone sin. All right, let's look at the number two. The peculiarity about Sabbath is, is the Sabbath is a commandment. Now, th that's a peculiarity um, because the Sabbath as a commandment is was pretty, when pretty much most people understand that the, when the Sabbath came along. But that's not true. Actually, he gave the Sabbath before he gave the commandments. Did you know that? As a matter of fact, it was the test commandment. He says, I'm going to do this. Uh, any day they can go out and get manna except this day. Why? That I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. He's about to give them the law, and he's going to test them to see if they can keep it. And he tested them, not with thou shalt do no murder, not with thou shalt not commit adultery, not with honoring the, honoring the Lord and uh, not um, desecrating his name, not with not bearing false witness. He decided to do it with the Sabbath commandment. And here it is. On the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and, they sh and, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And what happened? They broke it. They couldn't do it. And he asked the question, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? Then the Lord said unto Moses, The people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. This is that which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. This is before the law, folks. This is before the law. And Moses told them, Eat that today, for, that is the, for today is the Sabbath unto the Lord. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. Now, this, this Sabbath commandment was actually given so that you would, he, he could test his people to see if they'll walk in his law. Well, what did he find out? No, they can't, they won't, they didn't. And it turned out that that was so. And he did that with the Sabbath commandment. Now, here's what you need to know. I don't think that God's changed his plan. I don't think that the Lord Jehovah has changed his plan in, in deciding whether or not people are going to walk in his ways or not. I think the Sabbath commandment is still the test commandment because it's the, it's the only commandment that anybody, anybody can keep. Anybody can keep this commandment. Anybody who's willing, you could keep it, but you won't. Why is that? What is the problem? Well, we've made up all these little things, haven't we? We've, we've, we've taught that, oh, uh, you know, when I remember telling people that I was going to start keeping the Sabbath, and they say, well, that means you can't travel on the Sabbath. Oh, yeah? Where'd you read that? You know, that means you can't push an elevator button. That means you can't turn the water on. That means you can't turn a light switch on. Oh, yeah? Where, where'd you read that? Where'd that come from? You see, that's, that is what Jesus talked about was burdens that were laid upon the shoulders of men by the rabbis who love to lay burdens on people. They don't keep them, but they expect you to. 
And it made Yeshua absolutely disgusted with what the Jews had done to his law. Taking the, the Sabbath commandment of rest and relaxation, a gift of God given to his people, and turn it into something horrible and dreaded and a pain in the neck. Until people, you can find scripture where it, 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 the people say, Oh, I wish that the Sabbath were over so we could go and do what we want to do. I have never wished that the Sabbath was over, except when I was being very selfish. But the Sabbath is a wonderful gift. It's a gift of God to us. And they ruined it so badly that it, that it actually angered Messiah. Let's look at number three. The Sabbath was an integral part of the law. The Sabbath uh, and the new moon spoken of were a part of the statutes and ordinances and in the New Testament. They were altogether different than the weekly Sabbath. These were the Sabbaths that were to be observed and kept um, in, in the feast of the Lord. And keeping the Sabbath is still a part of the law that God has written in our heart. Now, these Sabbath, if we don't understand Sabbath, we can't keep His holy days. The Sabbath observance was included in the Ten Commandments that were written by the hand of God. How in the world can we purport the idea that it's not for us today when they were written by the finger of God? You know, he could have written them in the scrolls of Moses. And you might have an argument. But they were carved in stone with the other ten. Now... How are we going to, to reconcile this with New Testament thinking? Because, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that believe, well, we're not under the law anymore because we're under grace. Let me tell you who's under grace. If you're not keeping the commandments, you're not under grace. You might think you're under grace because you've been taught that grace is mercy. And so God decided to stop enforcing the law. It's just that ridiculous. He doesn't care now if you keep the commandments or not. Well, if he doesn't care about the fourth commandment, he probably doesn't care about the seventh. Cool. Commit adultery. No big deal. Yeah, because it's all grace now. It's all mercy now, you see. He doesn't hold us to these things anymore. Do you know if you went around the world preaching that, they would stone you. I don't know. Maybe some people would like it. But if you went around preaching that he'd done away with the laws pertaining to murder, nobody would believe that. But Sabbath, for some reason, yeah, yeah, okay, Sabbath, yeah, that's a Jewish thing. You know, people's theology is so messed up. You know, when you stand before the Lord on, on Judgment Day, and, pro and, and actually before then, something's going to happen to you. I, I believe it happens the, the second that you die. Something's going to happen to you that's going to, I hope it scares your socks off. But something's going to happen that's never you never experienced before and that is all the veil is going to be lifted from your eye all the veil that you have created that you have sat and sewn with your little crochet needles and put over your eyeballs so that you can't see the truth all that's going to be gone and when it is gone all your excuses are going to be laid bare and you're going to see and understand what you've well essentially not been able to understand until now and all your excuses are going to make you look mighty, <laughs> mighty foolish. And especially when it comes to things like the Sabbath day. What, you couldn't keep the only commandment that absolutely cost you nothing? You couldn't keep the commandment that demanded nothing from you? Let's look at number five. Sabbath keeping is peculiar in that. Sabbath keeping is mentioned throughout the Old and the New Testament in Scriptures. I don't care where you look, you're going to find the Sabbath being honored by God's people. And when it wasn't honored, it was, the, it, was dis, it, was, it was under the displeasure of God. How in the world have we come to the point where all of a sudden it's not important anymore? Let me give you some advice from Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the way and see and ask for the old path. Wherein is the good way. And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. You want to find rest for your souls, you're going to have to rediscover the Sabbath. If, you, if the Sabbath is not a part of your life, my friend, 
I don't, I don't know how in the world you're making it. I, I did. I mean, I made it. I made it just like you're making it. I made the excuses. I played the games in my head. I kept my own little Sabbath, and I played around with it. But I'll tell you what, it will not stand. It, your, your idea of Sabbath, if you're not keeping the Lord's Sabbath like he said to do it, your Sabbath will not stand seven days of your Bible study. If you spent seven days in this book, your, that doctrine would evaporate. You don't even, I mean, you know what? I can disprove the Sabbath without the Bible. Just give me an encyclopedia. Just give me a, a computer connected to the Internet. I'll show you in 15 minutes that there's no truth in Sabbath. I mean, it, do, it doesn't take a scholar. It doesn't take a theologian. It doesn't take a guy with a whole lot of sense as I am proof. All we have to do is just want to know the truth and keep it. But you see, you'd rather belong than be right. That's the problem. You know full well that if you start keeping the Sabbath day, you're not going to mix with your friends anymore. You're going to get ostracized by your pastor and your preacher and all your friends. They're going to think that you're going nuts. All right, stay there. Stay there in the displeasure of God and the pleasure of your friends. Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, so that when you fail, they'll receive you into their everlasting habitations. You know, that's the only remark I ever believe that the Lord ever said in sarcasm. You just go ahead. You just go ahead. Make to yourselves friends of all that foolish religion. Because when you fail, you're going to need somebody to take you in. But you're not going to like their everlasting habitations. Because I'm afraid the reward that the Lord has set up for people who do their own thing is not a pleasant thing at all. Number six... Jesus mentioned the Sabbath as a factor at the consummation of the age. I, I, I got to ask you something. If you believe that Jesus, that he believed that the Sabbath was a factor in the consummation of the age, that he said that pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. If you actually believe that he thought it was a factor at the end of the age, and we see it at the opening of the scriptures when, when, the, when the Lord created the earth. We find it before the law. We find it in the law. We find it throughout the law and the prophets. We find that Jesus kept the Sabbath day. And now he's saying to the, to the saints in the end days that Sabbath is a factor then too. And you read in Zechariah where we're going to keep one new moon to the other and Sabbath to the other. If it always, if it was from the very beginning, and it continues all the way to the end, why do you think it's not for us today? I mean, do you have an answer for me on this? Because I've always wondered about that. It it was, it it was, and it will be. But right now, it's not. I, I don't I don't get it. I, I don't understand your theology. If that makes sense to you, I don't know how I can help you. Well, let's look at uh, Matthew 7:12. This is another portion that we need to understand about the Sabbath and its peculiarity. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Let me draw your attention to the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets were until John. After the reading of the law and the prophets, we see in Acts 13. Philip and Nathaniel find him saying, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Also you find the law and the prophets mentioned in Romans 3.21. The Sabbath day is clearly witnessed by both the law and the prophets. The Apostle Paul argued convincingly that he was not a heretic because he believed all things written in the law and the prophets. Can you say with the apostle that you believe all things written in the law and the prophets? Because you see, the law and the prophets are the testimony of truth in the earth, in the world. And when it, when it ascribes to the law and the prophets, it is truth. And the Sabbath is found throughout the law and the prophets. There's not one shred of Scripture that ever hinted the fact that it was going away. 
Now, let's look at number eight. It's, are we to believe that the, that the Sabbath is not a part of, of our life, even though it is a part of, the, of timekeeping and worship in the kingdom of God in eternity? The new heavens and the new earth, it will come to pass that from one Sabbath to the other, all flesh shall come to worship before me. Are we really supposed to believe that the Sabbath was for the children of God in times past? And, in, and it will be in the future, but it's not for us today. Listen, the red words say it all. What did Jesus say? He said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man. I don't care how you twist the scriptures, you're not going to pronounce that word man, Jew. You're not going to pronounce that man, you, but not me. It was The Sabbath was made for man, and we need to realize that our Lord, Yeshua, is the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, are, are we saying that He's the Lord of the Sabbath day, the seventh day of the week, but the first day of the week is the Lord's day? That doesn't even make sense. How could we even call... I, I've heard people take the scripture in Revelation that says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and say this is scriptural proof that the first day of the week is the Lord's day. You know... We have blind leaders of the blind. And you need to realize that both of you are going into the ditch. You don't start getting your clues and your cues from this scripture. You're not going to understand the Sabbath day. There's just a lot of things about the Christian life that you're not going to understand. I want you to t come back and let's do the third part of this series. We're going to see you then. We're going to finish this on Sabbath. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Don Harris with Think Red Ink Ministries. We encourage you to think red ink. And here we are with a wonderful opportunity that I want to thank Al and Tommy Cooper for. You know, when you partner and support with GLC, you make these kind of broadcasts possible. So let me thank you as well. We're going to go into the scriptures and learn to think red ink. Not necessarily what men teach us, not necessarily what we read in commentaries, but what we read out of the scriptures, what our Lord said. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? How did Jesus handle the situation? That's what we want to do, to learn to think red ink. Any of the teachings that you hear on this series, on this broadcast, are available from GLC simply by writing. And I encourage you also to visit our website, www.thinkredink.com. Produced by and for God's Learning Channel. If you enjoy this program, we need your support to keep this program on GLC. Please make your checks out to God's Learning Channel, P.O. Box 61000, Midland, Texas 79711 1000. Please be sure to designate where your contribution is intended. It is very important to let GLC know which programs you enjoy and support.